back to Out of the Rough. I'm joined by Tamara Gurney. Tamara Gurney is the president and CEO of Mission Valley Bank. And today we're going to talk about opportunities for small business to thrive in these really challenging markets. But I want to ask you a little bit about the story behind Mission Valley Bank because you're the founder also. Yes, I am. Uh, it's great to be here and I, th I thank you for asking me You're that. welcome. Um, we started the bank. I got a group of folks together that I had worked with for some 20 years at another community-based business bank that was acquired in 1999 and the community in Sun Valley where we originally started was looking for that community bank to come back and provide that service uh, which they felt was taken away when the larger bank acquired us. So. We got together and put a business plan together and got the bank open and uh, started in, in July of 2001, actually, just right before 9-11 and yes. all the challenges. Yes. So we feel like that really served us well in, in helping us navigate difficult times. We didn't think we'd see anything like that again, but right. here we are. So. You know, if you want to be successful in a business, Michael, you've seen a lot of businesses thrive and not or, or sink. Right. Start it in a downward market. Right. I mean, start start it in a challenging market, and you're going to be successful. Um, and as a as a uh, hardworking entrepreneur, I have a lot of respect for you. And also, I, I want to say this, and that is, the small community banks are not your big mega banks. They're the ones that are surviving off working with the community, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And there's three points that we want to talk about, and that is, there's be recently been some legislative opportunities that have made it so that. Banks can increase their cash flow because of certain depreciation. Um, share with us um, that insight you share with your customers. Well, as part of the stimulus that the government has been putting in place uh, over the last couple of years to try to stimulate growth in the economy after the, the recession, if you will, there was legislation passed, uh, the, a tax relief act, some jobs act. Uh, and part of that was to stimulate small businesses to go ahead and make capital investments that they were shy to be making because they didn't have the cash, for example, and banks weren't lending, or the feeling that banks weren't lending. And so uh, under Section 179, there's an opportunity to purchase equipment, fixed assets that you're going to deploy over a long period of time. There are a lot of, of uh, requirements to to adhere to and it's important you talk to your CPA I'm speaking just from the banking side of how mm -hmm. to finance this and take a, uh, advantage of that opportunity mm -hmm. but if you put those assets some new equipment for example into play by September the 8th of 2010 through January of 2012 so it's a short window you have an opportunity to take hundred percent depreciation on that asset up to five hundred thousand dollars so and plus an additional fifty thousand um, dollar bonus depreciation so if you bonus look, depreciation. Bonus, right. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you basically can write off $550,000 in that first year, and if you're in a 30% tax bracket, that's about $165,000. What that translates to is essentially pre-funding a loan to purchase that equipment for mm -hmm. half the life of the loan. Right. So you're basically getting half the loan payments covered through that tax break. It's a huge it's advantage. It's a brilliant way to look yeah. at it. And I see lots of folks that they say, you know, I don't have the cash right now and I want to hold on to it. Or maybe they deploy the cash and buy the equipment. And now they have taken cash that they desperately need to run their business and they haven't taken advantage of this opportunity to write that off. And uh, we can show them how to, to finance it in that way and, and save some cash for some other I like what you said. By employing that strategy, right. you're able to make a third maybe even more of the payments from the tax savings on that particular um, product or asset. Um, also, we're finding that businesses are reinvesting in technology and better, faster equipment Correct. simply because it'll help productivity because wages aren't necessarily going down. In fact, uh, if you've got a good employee, you're, mm -hmm. you're usually compensating right. them fairly well, and but it'll help productivity, and it'll also help the bite on increased energy costs because yeah. we have to counter that somehow. We have to become more productive. Absolutely. Um, and I think increased productivity is one of the greatest sources of us not having too bad of inflation because if we increase productivity, uh, products go down in cost because everything else seems to be going up in cost. Let's talk about finding, and, and I like the way you phrase this, how to find uh, hidden hidden cash in your balance, balance sheet. sheet. I think what we find, uh, a big part of who we are that I feel differentiates Mission Valley Bank from many others is we are really focused on, on 
try to be a trusted advisor, and that may be somewhat of an overused word, but we want to be invited to the table with the small business owner, with their attorney and with their CPA as an advisor to fill in those gaps from the financial perspective. And so what we do to get that invitation, if you will, is provide as much education and outreach to our clients and prospects as we can. And what we have found over the years is the entrepreneur who started the business is usually great at the sales aspect. And they're a little weak on the financial side in mm -hmm. terms of understanding the mechanics of the balance sheet and the income statement. And the hidden cash I'm referring to is, is understanding what it costs to hold um, inventory, for example, and how much cash can be freed up to turn inventory. But one of the biggest mistakes that we see recently, because cash flow is such a challenge for so many people, because if we're not getting paid, then we turn around and we slow pay the next guy. So you're getting strung out instead of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and it's a real struggle to keep the doors open. So folks are coming out and saying, gee, if I can get you to pay in 10 days instead of 30, 30 would be nice in this environment, but mm -hmm. let's just say for sake of example, right. if I can get you to pay in 10, I'll give you a 2% discount. Well, if you look at that, that 20-day cycle that you're shortening up, there's, there are 18 of those cycles in a year. So that 2% times 18 yeah. is 36% interest right. that you're basically paying right. to get that money quicker. And 2% and discounts, probably pretty skinny. Some mm -hmm. people are offering double that and more. Mm -hmm. So that just takes that interest rate up even higher. So it's like paying a 36% rate right. of return. Or double it. Yeah. You know? and, and what we have, are, uh, and many banks offer, are accounts receivable financing, financing lines where we essentially buy that receivable and give you cash in 24 hours. You keep running your business, and if you can get the receivables to turn even faster, that interest rate will go down. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of work to educate you about where the money is in your balance sheet and how you can free it up, and then you make your own choices. But most banks can do financing at less than half the cost of the example I just gave you. Yeah, and you need a true consultant when it comes right. to your business in all aspects, looking for money Absolutely. in your ba balance uh, sheet, looking at accounts receivable financing. Right. Um, and you almost have to look at the total cost of money when you give discounts also. Absolutely. Yeah, for pay. Um, we're going to jump to a quick break, but, but beforehand, I do want to get your email address uh, for this okay. segment and how uh, those that want more information about Mission Valley Bank uh, can reach you. They can reach me at tgurney, T-G-U-R-N-E-Y, -E at missionvalleybank.com is my direct email. And uh, they can reach me on my cell phone 24-7. I'll probably be sorry I said that. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I give it out on my business card because I want to be accessible to clients, and it's uh, area code 818-415-5354. Uh, How many CEOs, uh, president CEO of organizations actually give you this cell number? Obviously, Tamara, <laughs> you're very committed to uh, the community. You're very committed yeah. to lending. Uh, you know, in Southern California, I know yeah. it's more than Southern California, but you're very entrenched in the community, so thank you for all you do. We're going to jump to a quick break, but I'm going to ask you both to stay because we're going to talk specifically about opportunities that your business has to grow in this ever-changing economy. <music>